Hey everybody, Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to add samples to the sampler inside of GarageBand. I'm gonna be doing this using the Produce Like a Pro samples that come for free when you sign up on his mailing list. Um, hey, what's up, Warren? Uh, but by the way, we are not affiliated at all. I've never met Warren, but you know, he's a fellow YouTuber in the home recording world. So of course I'm paying attention to his channel. He's competition, right? <laughs> no, it's a brotherhood, man. We're all making music. It's totally cool. So really quickly, just a few shout outs for Justin John Lamar, David Campbell, Andy Scott, Rob Rains, Kingpin, William Wayland, and Giacomo Ardesi. Thank you very much. For those of you who are interested in the how to switch the reverbs in the main channel output, don't worry, I'll make that video next week. Anyway, let's get right into it. Of course, you can do this at any point in your process, where you, wherever you are in your recording process, you can add these samples and, and you know change the drum sounds whenever. Today, I'm just gonna start from a blank slate to make it easy. So the first thing I have to do, find a drum track, right? And I'm not gonna get picky about this. Very first one, totally good, right? Okay, now, second thing I'm gonna to need to do is create a software instrument track so I can get these drums as actual MIDI's instruments that I can manipulate, right? So software instrument, super easy. All right, we're gonna switch this to drums and it's the SoCal kit, all right? So now I'm gonna copy this one and you can't just like, you can't hit option and drag this one down. You have to copy it, come down to this channel and paste it, okay? So now you can see I have that drum beat as a file in, in MIDI notes that I can manipulate, right? Easy enough. Now I need to make two more of these tracks that are drum software instrument tracks, just like this. And that is because I'm going to make one for the kick and one for the snare. And that is because Warren only gives us kicks and snares in that sample pack. However, if you sit there for a second and think, oh my gosh, I am going to be able to change the individual snare sound on my favorite drum kit. It's like, boom, wow, that's so awesome. Thank you, Warren, for giving out these samples for free, super generous and nice of you, all right? So here's what we gotta do. We're gonna come into the editor window of this track and we're gonna identify the kick and the snare, which are the two at the bottom, right? So here are the kicks and here are the snares. Easy, right? One thing you do have to be careful of is when you copy these out, you will need to make sure that you're putting them in the right place on the timeline. So just make sure that your uh, timeline cursor is set exactly to where it needs to be. So I'm gonna click on the C1 key and I'm gonna select all of those drums at the same time. I'm gonna cut it from here. Uh, that wasn't how you do that. Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, copy it out of here. Copied them, delete them. Now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna paste them. Okay, so now I have the kick drums just here. Okay, pretty easy thing to think about, I think. I hope, is that a right way to say it? Now I need the snares, okay? So here we are, gonna click boom on that key and I have all the snares. I'm gonna line up the timeline, okay? Copy those, delete those, and new track. Come down here, select it, making sure that my you know timeline cursor is in the right spot. I'm gonna paste those snares in. So now up here, all I have is the hi-hats and the crashes, right? Here's the snare by itself, right? And here's the kick. Okay, now we're here. So I have this kick and snare, and, and this is how, if you wanted to go through and individually mix these drums, this is exactly how you would do it. Um, anyway, let's get to adding the samples, all right? So you're gonna go to the plugin window, and you're gonna come down here to the top one where it says drum designer right now, and we're gonna load up the AU sampler in stereo, okay? Make sure you're doing this in stereo. Okay, so now we're here, we get this window. Uh, this is the sampler. So we're gonna open it up, and it does by default have a sine wave thing going on, which we will get rid of in a minute. Now, to load the actual samples, here's the trick. Come down here to the dark gear, which is very dark and stupidly hard to see. Apple, what are you thinking? Um, anyway, here, add samples right here. And I have mine already routed to the file. So you might have to dig around a little bit to find out where your file is. Uh, but anyway, we want a snare. Now, the interesting thing about the snares that he provides you is that there's the close mic sound and then there's the room sound. He has, it looks like a left and right microphone and or maybe it's a stereo microphone. I don't know, left and right and the close mic sound, which is by itself kind of not that spectacular. It is really the room mics that make this particular sample so awesome. All right, so uh, we're gonna mute this. So now I have the snare loaded up to my track, but 
there's a sine wave happening. So I just go here, I hit minus, no big deal, it's gone, right? Okay, so um, now I need to do the same exact thing, but I need to add those room sounds and I'm gonna do it on the same exact track here, right? So I'm gonna come up here, add samples, and I want the, this is the left side, I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna get the right side, okay? Now, if you do, which you most likely will, want to change the volume of these two samples, these room sounds, you're gonna do that right here with a volume control. This is one of those you go left and right uh, to change the volume, just so you know, um, don't try to like go in a circle, it doesn't work. You just go left and right. So I'm gonna just leave those, uh, let's say at zero, let's just put those at zero for now. And this one, okay, it was already at zero. So now I have all those samples, let's hear it. Okay. Something's not right, okay? So you hear that as well. So what we need to do is identify where on exactly what key this needs to be living, which is right here. So this is C4 if you can't read that. So I need to come up here and I'm actually going to just move this. <laughs> yeah, can you hear how low they are? So we need to move them up. And again, we're gonna make sure that we got the cursor in the right place. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit so I can see it better close this so I can see more of it. All right, so let's just go up until we get the drum sound we want, right? So where are we here? Okay, so C3. So one thing I haven't quite wrapped my head around is why it's telling me C4 here. And when it says C4 here, maybe somebody can tell, help me here. Why it's not C4 here, it's reading as C5 in the in the thing so I, I, haven't, I haven't quite figured this out maybe your garage band will not do this mine does it anyway so that means i have to be at c3 one octave down for it to sound like a normal snare right so now when i play it right okay so there we go so one thing you're already probably noticing is like hey wow wow that's sort of a short snare sound right well that's because these are set so short these individual midi notes are set really, really short, right? Um, so what you need to do is, you know, make sure that they're long enough because there's that reverb sound, which is gonna take time. So we're gonna grab those and we're just going to stretch these notes out a little bit farther here. Uh, I gotta get bigger in the view here. Oh God, it's going the wrong way. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna grab one of these and just stretch it out to about there. Well, maybe that's a little too much for some of the doubly ones. Let's try that. Okay, there you go, now you can hear it. And we can stretch them all the way out if we want. Okay, one of those just conflicted, so let's make sure we're not, get, we don't want them to touch. Um, and I think one might be at the end here. But anyway, I think you get the idea. You gotta stretch those out so you hear all the reverbs. So let's come down here and do the same thing on the kicks, right? Just so we do this two times so we have the sounds we want. Again, coming down here to Drum Designer, going to the sampler, sampler, stereo, okay? Here we go down to the editor. I want to add a sound and I'm gonna look for a kick, okay? So let's just say I want a kick, I want a kick, all right? Now, getting rid of the sine wave thing, Okay, now, here we go. So we are again looking for what note, and just so you know, it indicates by turning the thing yellow, okay? And so we're having the same issue here. Uh, it's just a short sample, so we need to stretch them out a little bit. Anyway, so it's C4 here. So now when we come down here, it's, it's not in the right place. So we're, again, we're gonna move this. So it's saying C4, that means we want it to be on C3, right? C3, okay? And again, we're gonna stretch these out to make sure that we get as much of that sample as we want. So basically, that's how you're gonna load in these samples and use them. It's a really great way to augment these drum sounds inside a GarageBand. Here it is now with the GarageBand hi-hat and stuff. Right? And you can do all sorts of things. You can pan it however you want, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, 
Warren, super generous of you to give out these samples. I know that you know these were some from some good clients of yours. So the rest of us out here in the in the in the world, we really appreciate you giving away stuff like that. That's very nice of you. So you guys, make sure you check out his channel, uh, which I am not affiliated with at all. I'm just a fan of his channel, so I am suggesting you go check out his videos because he makes a lot of good stuff. I really like the gear reviews; it's very interesting. Um, anyway, you guys, I hope that helps you get some new sounds inside of your Garage Band to play with over the weekend. And uh, as always, please leave comments below if you have any questions. Find me on Facebook, Instagram. Now I'm on Instagram, so find me on Instagram. I do stuff there a lot. Um, and also, patrons, you guys. Uh, I actually lost a couple of patrons recently, so I don't know what's going on with that, but um, I'm trying to push GarageBand and Beyond to the new level, and the adpocalypse that happened here on YouTube a few months ago has really changed the financial dynamic of how I make money doing this. Um, this is something that I really believe in. I really believe that we can all record music at home that is of a professional grade. Um, but you need, you know, if you don't know how to do it, that's what I'm here to do. I want to teach you how to do it because it's so easy and it's so much fun to do by yourself. And then by the time you graduate and want to go into a real recording studio, you'll have a much better concept of how the whole process goes. So anyway, if you believe in the channel and you like what I'm making here, please consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page. Um, because the ad revenue is pathetic and you know, it's just, it is what it is. So Patreon is the thing that's really making this channel survive. So thank you to those of you who have signed up. I I appreciate it. I, I keep saying it all the time. I really, really appreciate it. And I do have um, benefits and rewards for people who sign up. And I also am going to be making Patreon only content very soon. We're basically going to be looking at the mixes of my original songs. Um, and any other stuff that they want to see, I'm going to make it for them because they're my patrons. And I'm going to do whatever I can to make them happy. Anyway, you guys, have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.